Have you ever been in the right place at the right time? Well, if you were around in the mid 1990s and bought into the Springbank cask ownership program, then you were most certainly at the right place at the right time. Now, that obviously assumes that you had the foresight to go ahead with the purchase as well, but those casks that were originally available from just 950 pounds are now worth anywhere from the high tens of thousands to mid hundreds of thousands of pounds each. Now. This is one of the reasons why people talk about cask investment so much, because historically it has been very profitable. Let's caveat all of this by saying that if that's if you did it correctly and had patience and took full ownership of the cask at the warehouse. Now, the Springbank Cask Investment Programme is really interesting. This is going to be a deep dive into it. And we've got all the history. We've done mountains of research into this. And it's really it's a really fascinating insight into the whiskey industry and cask ownership from the early to mid 1990s. Now, why do I know all of this? Well, if you don't know me, I'm Mark Littler. I sell lots of whiskey for people and exit their cask investments. Now, this I've been really wanting to do this video for a long time. So let's just jump into it. Let's jump into the history and the origins of the Springbank Cask Programme. So we don't really have to guess whose idea this cask investment program was because we've got an article here from Country Life, November the 24th, 1994. And it says here, it says that the idea was that of Mark Rainier. Now we'll come on to Mark Rainier in a second. He's the godfather of one of Mr. Wright's three, three children and a regular visitor to Campbelltown. His passion for malt is equivalent his love of wine. Now, it says, it was Mr. Rainier who came up with the idea of the investment scheme. The distillery wanted to find a way to generate capital because as the lengthy maturation process prohibits a speedy return on initial outlays. He suggested that encouraging customers to pay for the whiskey at source was a solution that would keep all parties happy. There you go. Mark Rainier, Mr. Brickladdy, Mr. Waterford is the one that came up with this. Now, you've got to remember at the time, Springbank were, were recovering from a period where they chose to close down from 1979 to 1987 because of the overproduction of the whiskey lock and the lack of demand thereof. So the distillery chose to close during that period. Now, once they reopened, they need revenue in the short term to fund operations. And that is where Mark Rainier's idea of this cask investment program came in. It was Mark Rainier, as we've mentioned, whose idea this was, and he set it up in collaboration with Springbank. Now, Mark Rainier, we obviously know him now for buying the closed Brookladdy distillery, bringing it back to life and then selling it on again. And he's now running the Waterford distillery over in Ireland. And if you want to be really geeky, Mark Rainier has always talked about terroir in whiskey, and he talks a lot about that with the Waterford Distillery. But in the marketing materials for the Springbank casks, he talks a lot about terroir for, 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 for whiskey as well especially the regionality. And these were really sort of pushed as sort of being like the Campbelltown. There was only two distilleries there at the time. So it, that was really pushed, but we're gonna to come to the marketing material in a second. Take a look at this though. This is an original order form. It's fascinating. So these were all sold through La Reserve, which was a, 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 a wine merchant in Knightsbridge Mark Rainier was running it. And then if you receive one of these order forms, man alive, you're in for a treat. So what have we got here? We've got a refill sherry hogshead of Springbank, £1,150. Fresh sherry hogshead, £1,250. Fresh port hogshead, £1,300. Oh, this is where it gets terrifying. Refill sherry butt, £2,300. Fresh sherry butt, £2,500. Rum barrels, £900. Man alive! Those casks, if you'd bought them in the early 1990s, like I think 1992-93 was one of the first years that this happened, they're now worth hundreds of thousands of pounds. So if you want a valuation and you're watching this, get in touch with me and the contact details are below. So you can see here that these casks were expensive at the time, you know, whiskey was definitely not the in the market that it's in now. It was recovering from that whiskey lock period. So these were expensive, but this brought instant revenue back into the distillery, which meant that they could continue operation. And that is why Springbank arguably were in the position that they are today. So the obvious question then is now, why are these casks worth so much? Well, there are a lot of variables, but there are three four key variables I'll say. First, most importantly, the Spring Bank brand is huge now. It's it's famous for being the distillery that spends no money on marketing and because they do no marketing, that is their marketing. That sets them apart from everybody else. Except Glen Farkless maybe, they're similar. But the Springbank brand has gone huge. Collectors and investors have got on board with Springbank and 
yeah, it, it's just gone wild. The second factor, and I'll say this outright, it's that branding that has caused the greatest jump in the value over and above these other three remaining factors. So the next factor is the quality of the whiskey and the quality of the wood. So the distillate at Springbank, phenomenal, phenomenal distillate. And also the casks that they were putting them in them into, these fresh and refilled sherry casks and bourbon casks and rum casks were phenomenal. The wood has made the whiskey incredible. I watched a very well-known YouTuber's Patreon video that had like a little remark about cask investment and sort of saying that some of these Springbank casks were uh, below par and the distillery had to buy them back to you know to avoid scandal i've never experienced that we've probably sold well over 100 casks of springbank in the past couple of years and the whiskey has always been fantastic in fact i'm hard pressed to think of a single one that hasn't been exceptional quality and that is due to the dedication and quality and time and love that springbank put into making their whiskey and also their very careful wood management now those two are sort of like out of your hands and the other two factors are also out of your hands in a way, but they relate to the whiskey that's inside the barrel or cask, and that is the ABV of the whiskey and the volume of whiskey that remains in it. So the ABV is important because it needs to be above 40% ABV to be legally called Scotch whiskey. 39.9%, you've got a cask of spirit drink. It's not Scotch whiskey, it's not Springbank, you can't call it anything. So inside a Inside whiskey, there are two main compounds. You've got ethanol and you've got water. Now, the ABV is expressed as a ratio of the alcohol, the pure ethanol to water. So a bottle of whiskey that's bottled at 40% ABV, there's 40% ethanol to 60% water. Now, the liters of alcohol is a unit that reflects how many liters of pure alcohol at 100% proof are within that cask. So you take the bulk, times it by the percent, and you will get the liters of alcohol. Now the, that liter of alcohol figure is what's used by HMRC for calculating the duty and taxes. So that is the figure that the industry uses. The bulk liters or the bottle count, meh. Nobody talks like that in the industry. It's irrelevant. It's the liters of alcohol and the ABV. Now again, sorry if all of this is a bit technical, but it needs to be known. You know, you need to understand it's not just a case of having a cask because when you sell a cask, you're not selling the cask, you're selling the contents of the cask. And it's the contents of these Springbank casks combined with the quality of the branding that makes them so valuable. So let's continue this deep dive then because we've done loads of research into this program and we've got some really interesting articles here. The first one here is from The Independent in 1992. Uh, I think sink your person. Oh, I can't read that top line there. But buying whiskey in the castle looks like a safe investment, says Michael Jackson. And this is from The Independent, Saturday, the 22nd of January, December 1991. So this is just as this cask ownership program was starting to, to rise. You then come into this one, The Independent on Sunday, 6th of December 1992. So one year apart. So obviously it worked in 1991. So they did it again in 1992, dip into the malts uh, for, for rare, you know, for good returns. Again, this is mostly Mark Rainier talking and we might put copies of these up on our blog. So if you're interested, put comments below and we'll get these transcribed and uploaded because they're really fascinating. Next one is another one here. I'll have a very large scotch. And then finally in the Daily Telegraph, with luck, you might roll out the barrel. Again, talking about how profitable these cask investment schemes can be, especially those with at Springbank. Now, when you bought a cask as well, you were also entitled to one of these. This is the cask owner's privilege card. So this is like a little credit card that you received. And here's the original covering letter that came with it. It says, cask owner privileges. As the owner of a cask of Springbank, you are entitled to the privileges listed below. So the Maracanush, I'm pronouncing that terribly, golf club, uh, a championship links course situated four miles from Campbelltown will allow you a 10% discount on green fees. I wonder if these are still valid. Has anybody tried? Should we try? The Ardshell Hotel will allow 10% discount on their normal price of dinner for two. Well, that's not a bad thing, is it? Springbank Distillery will allow free access to the cask owners by arrangement to view their cask in the distillery. I'm not sure if that's still valid or not. And then once annually, privileged card holders will be allowed to purchase six bottles of liquor at discounted prices from the below. So you can kind of see that here Springbank were incentivizing the purchases too. They wanted people to buy these casks and they needed the revenue. And one of the key things that you 
look, you know, in, in, in 2023, one of the key things that you'll know about cask investment is these cask investment guides. Now, did Springbank and La Reserve produce a cask investment guide? Yes, they did. 20 odd years before all these cask investment guides, here is La Reserve's cask investment guide. It's in association with the Springbank Distillery and it's absolutely fascinating. So again, I won't bore you with too much of it, but there are some really, really interesting points in here. You would have thought that Springbank would be talking just about drinking it, but they're not. Options to drink or sell, both options are possible. The cask can be sold at any time onto the bulk market, to the distillery or to a third party, such as a merchant or end user. Brilliant, they were saying very openly at the front, you can sell this and you can do what you want with it. You can drink it, you can sell it. Some, and this is a caution, some casks that are being sold through distilleries will have caveats in the contract to say that you can only sell back to the distillery or bottle it yourself to drink. You won't be able to sell it to a third party. So just be warned, that's something to look out for. The next one is really, really, really fascinating in today's age of trademarks. Section 11, labeling. Your own design is possible and we are able to advise about the legal requirements and restrictions. Permission must be sought to use the Springbank name in the title, however, but will not be withheld if bottled at the distillery. And you know what? Fair play to Springbank. They still do this today for private cask owners. If you want your cask bottled by Springbank, they will put a special Springbank private cask owners label on there. And also they will put a, well, they did in the past. I don't know if they'll still do this. If you look at the Springbank Sin bottles that we sold earlier in the, oh, early early last year, you will see that they came, the, the, the syndicate who bought those casks came up with a custom design and then also had them printed by Springbank and labeled using their trademark. So it's really fascinating that. Not quite as fascinating is to talk about financial return here. And it's, it's sort of saying it's talking about the increase of the whiskey markets in 1993, 94, 95. And again, there is something that's just as important below this, and this is the warning. There have been several highly dubious companies that have been copying our scheme. They talk about the problems. There's always been problems with cask investment. There were problems in the 80s, there were problems in the 90s, there's problems in the 2000s, and there's problems now. Be warned. 99% of the problems come from you not taking ownership of the casks at the warehouse. And that is what is, 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 is sort of uh, warned against in here. So you think that that is a big sales pitch, but how many of these casks did they want to sell? Well, you know what? They wanted to sell a lot of them because at some point they made the decision to put this in here. So here it is here, but let's put it down on the table so you can see it. The Springbank single cask offer. Basically saying, uh, to find out more about the scheme and the benefits of being a single cask owner, please call me. And it's signed by Frank McCarty, the distillery manager. So Springbank were actively encouraging you to call up their distillery manager to say, please can I invest in your, some of your casks? And of course, there's a return slip there, which wants you to fill in your details so that they can get in touch with you. Now, the question remains then, are you lucky enough to have one of these casks and whether you should bottle it and sell the bottles or whether you should sell it and just sell the cask in bond? Well, there are things to consider in both of these situations. First of all, capital gains tax. If you sell them as bottles, you're gonna be paying capital gains tax. You've also got the issue of bringing a heck of a lot of bottles of the same product to market all at the same time, but that is not a problem. It can be worked around and if you want advice, let me know. Likewise, you can choose to sell the cask in bond and then all the duties and taxes that are gonna be payable for the cask at some point in the future are the responsibility of the new buyer. And the benefit of doing this is that the, the common understanding is that casks are free from capital gains because the whiskey inside is a wasting asset. As we talked about with that ABV earlier, if it drops below 40%, it's no longer whiskey. So it has a lifespan less than 50 years and therefore, Current advice, as we understand it, is that casks are free from capital gains, but always seek your own financial advice on this. Now, there we have it. It's the fascinating history of the Springbank cask investment scheme. And, you know, who would have ever thought that some of the biggest distillery names in Scotland were running these schemes, but they are in fact some of the originators of these schemes because they needed the revenue when they were in times of need. I've said it several times through this video, if you've got a cask of Springbank and you're looking for some advice and some help or evaluation on the cask, just get in touch, all my details are below and I'll be happy to help.